the like sort may you do at sword and dagger or sword and buckler at such time as I say you may take the grip at the single sword fight, you may then instead of the grip soundly strike him with your buckler on the head or stab him with your dagger and instantly either strike up his heels or fly out, and as he likes a cooling card to his hot brain, sick fit, so let him come for another. George Silver, Brief Instructions Upon My Paradoxes of Defense, Chapter 4, Section 12. Greetings, Spencers of the Interwebs. My name is William Kilmer. Uh, Will, or Bill, to most... Billy to exactly two. My pronouns are he, him, and his, and I fence at Worcester Historical Swordsmanship in Worcester, Massachusetts in the United States. I have been a student of the true fight of George Silver for just over three and a half years. Do you have a moment to talk about the true fight of George Silver? I confess that I have put off publishing this material from the George Silver live stream on Sword and Buckley because I personally have very little to say about this weapon set, except that I am a greater danger to myself uh, with a buckler than I am to others. Uh, quite frankly, I personally would rather have an empty hand uh, than a buckler, at least against an opponent armed with a sword and whatever they have in their offhand. Unless, of course, it is another sword, two swords, in the hands of someone who is accustomed to their use, uh, beats one sword, in my experience. I cannot seem to get the trick of uh, controlling my opponent's blade with the buckler even momentarily, and since striking your opponent soundly with the buckler is generally disallowed in my neighborhood, though I hear from some of my correspondents, they sometimes do things differently in parts of Canada, or is that only among family members? Anyway, uh, SCA rapier folks have bucklers with corners on them. Uh, indeed, an unreasonable number of corners, though I cannot find much historical precedent for the design. Perhaps someone will send me some period art. Now, of course, Paul Wagner is pleased to think that Silver intended a buckler like an upside-down dog dish, uh, likely with some sort of a spike in it, uh, which does show up in the period art, uh, and which... Uh, an example of is seen in the live stream footage, but it looks to me like an uncomfortable daily carry. I mean, the point of a sidearm is that it is at your side, uh, you know, right there with you, and not in a closet at home or uh, on the arm of your uh, serving man. Uh, so, I will leave you all to correct my opinions in the comments. Uh, my thanks to the participants in the live stream, Paul Wagner, Stephen Hand, Nathan Barnett, Duncan McAvoy, Alan Burns, and Gareth Jones. Let's go to the live stream segment. So you made me that. <laughs> also, Tempered Spring Steel. And utterly indestructible. Yeah. But how's the reception? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, you got to be careful of those things. You sent me down a couple, Paul, and I've broken a couple of swords on the edges of them. <laughs> <laughs> one of my projects from over the holidays is to make a a, a proper one, um, where I'm, which is going to be leather, because the real ones are actually one with the, that, the bars. Yeah, yeah. So they had like a, a web of steel frame. Oh. And then it was, they were, it was heavy leather riveted onto the frame. 
Yeah. And I have a feeling that once you've got, like, if you've got the sort of reinforced leather buckler, swords are just going to go and just stick to it, which means binding them and catching up is going to be even easier oh. than, than yeah, with that the makes feel. sense, doesn't it? Oof. Yeah. But it's a very traditional way of making them. Um, Wales was apparently the buckler making place. Oh, all right. So the Welsh were the ones who came up with the idea in the first place. I've gone off the big the big radar dishes because they tend to be used more like a Taj. And, um, yeah, I, I find it hard to do what Silver explicitly tells you to do with a buckler with them. Yeah. Uh, horses, of course, I'm not go, I can't go, can't go back to a flat buckler anymore. I absolutely love the, the radar dishes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I agree with you there, Stephen. I, I've in my experimentation. I mean, it's it's obviously a little bit different because it's not an empty hand or whatever. But it, it the same sorts of techniques still seem to work for me and and um, and my students. Mm, I, I prefer yeah. the traditional buckler. Fair enough. Yeah. But uh, but I wouldn't mind going for the um, the for the, the one. Something like you see in De Grazzi's, um the 1594 translation of De Grazzi, which is quite a bit smaller than the, the radar dish. Yeah. So I want to... Did you like like the um, the premise of the uh, the sword and buckler class that... Um, uh, I don't know if people are aware of my, my current working hypothesis on... Um, uh, one thirty-three total of nine lines uh, on on sword and buckler, which is basically say uh, sword and buckler and sword and dagger are all are all one, saving that you may parry single with the buckler. Um, I'm sure somebody's got the text in front of them, but um, uh, and then you have to go back to the sword and buckler and say, well, what's a uh, sword and dagger, and say, well, what's he what's he telling you to do there, and Half of the stuff in the sword and dagger says, do exactly what I told you to do at single sword, but just with a dagger. And so you need to go back to the single sword. But um, if you do, if you do, um, if you do the stuff like the close play that he describes, if you if you do that, it starts to look incredibly like one thirty three. Uh, and right. 133 is, is silver and 133 are, are both explicitly parry with the sword, not with the buckler. And I've discussed why this certainly, you, you know, force wise, you can put the buckler in, in the way of a pretty much any, any cut, but it's so easy to, it's so easy to, 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 to flow and attack around the buckler and, um, yeah, so I, I I find that if I if I'm fighting sword and buckler, if I if I go to parry with the buckler, if I use the buckler as my primary parrying weapon, I do very badly. And if I use the sword as my primary parrying weapon, as silver and one thirty three tell you to, um, I do a whole lot better. And all, all my students concur. Um, yeah so um but basically yeah silver just touches on what happens in the close fight uh but what he one of the other people we had it who, who who came to that class um oh god brain stop working um german 133 guy roland roland yeah sorry um i was just having a senior moment there um yeah, the um, Roland turned up and I was doing techniques and said, well, what's that? And he said, well, that's the shield knock out of 133. That's a stab knock out of 133. That's, um, yeah, so the, the, the parallels are quite uncanny. Um, not because I think there's any link, any actual link there, but just because I think it's good techniques, good technique. Um, so I, I tend to teach some additional 133 material to people, but 
But when I fenced Roland, I actually found that he was very poorly set up to defend against the um, silver esque stuff. What's that? The silver esque stuff. Yeah. Because I, I found the same thing. I just sat in, in sort of open fight and just attacked on triangle steps. And most of the time I was just blowing through his attempted defences. Well, and, and I, I found that um, when I when I refused to uh, allow him to bind, I, I could pretty much dictate the fight. Yeah. Um, the middle of the fight, I went, all right, let's 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 play let's play the bindy windy game. And it's like, and then after a while I thought, no, let's not, because he's actually very good at it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but... But um, yeah, if 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 you want to play that sort of more based around open fight play where you deny denying the bind and it's very much a secondary thing, which I think it is, um, then the people who who do one thirty three find that very difficult to deal with. And yeah, I think I that's very entirely with that. I, I guess it depends how big, you do 133. <laughs> I think that's the very big problem. Yeah. The very big problem with 133 is that is that it assumes a assumes a prior knowledge of all the all all the um, the sort of wide play, um, and then sort of says, "All right, well here's here's the deep here's the close play um, that most people aren't that familiar with, um, and we don't have that assumed knowledge." Um, they talk the talks again and again about the common fenster, and I think a lot of what Silver explicitly describes again, as I was saying to to Duncan earlier, because Silver felt like the principles were starting to be lost. He he's explaining if you're in the mindset of um, keeping them distance, yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, but I think you're right. I think context is really important um, context is context is absolutely vital context and that's yeah. why for me i talk about a lot for me silver is not one thing or another quite often quite often it's, it's quite a lot of things together it depends on the context and his instructions allow you to use his, his instructions in so many different contexts yeah yeah, so yeah. if you get if you get too if you get too specific you're actually sort of hamstringing yourself yeah, I, I actually kind of agree. And I think that, um, and I think one of the very fascinating things about Silver compared to many other systems is his different fights, right? And I don't think they're just stances, if you will, or lines or, or, or whatever. Like the fights are completely different fights. They're, they've got completely different mindsets. They've got completely different actions. You know, some of them you're out fighting, some of them you're in fighting. And some of them you're grappling. And, and in a way, it it actually looks a lot to me like a early form of, like an MMA where you can mix martial arts, where you can go, oh, no, now I'm using this style and now I'm going to flick over to the garden fight and use this and now I'm going to flick over to the close fight and use this. Um, which I think is really important given the context of what you're talking about. For me, yeah. all that, that um, Sil was talking about is that if at first you can't hit them without them hitting you, use this stuff. It might work. Yeah. Use the rest of it. It might work. Yeah, I agree. But I think, um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think you could look at any of his individual fights and almost treat it like an entire style in and of itself. Mm. And each of them sort of side by side there's a lot of uh cross information and a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, things that they can teach one another but it's almost like going from a whole style to a different style to a different style and in the context of that that's where i see silver's uh grips or his grappling coming in uh where he's saying you know don't do it but if you do need to do it here's how um which is, and, and you know, the, the instruction that that's how you use a dagger, that's how you use a, a, a buckler and so on. And and I think, Stephen, that that's one point where you and I disagree. I don't think Silver's sword and buckler looks like 133. I think it looks like 
I think it looks like somebody that's trained in a bunch of different styles that has also trained in that, if that makes sense, rather than this is all they know how to do. But isn't but that what Stephen uh, was saying? Mm, oh, okay. So, so perhaps I I say, no, maybe Steve, we do agree that. <laughs> yeah, I, say, I, I think I think when I fence open, like when I fence out of open fight. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like 133 at all, but then I start fencing out of garden fight and a lot of the things that Silver explicitly tells you to do, okay, he says, do this, yeah, do sword and buckle like sword and dagger, or do sword and dagger yeah. like single yeah. sword. So you've got to take sometimes two steps back. Yeah. Um, so I'll parry in, in garden cross with the buckler, parry trap hit and... Uh, if somebody attacks me, if I'm in, in garden and somebody attacks me here, parry, trap, hit, that's that's, yeah, that's okay. the that's the classic shield knock. Yeah. Out of out of one thirty three. That is um yeah. Okay. Perhaps I, I think that's from your words. And in fact words. and in fact um one thirty three has one of the guards is is true garden. It's um, the the crook or the crutch. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I find, except I find, I find myself holding the buckler in a slightly different position, given that I've got a basket hilt. And don't yeah, I, I, I don't want to cross there. Yeah. Yeah. It's that having a cross and not having a, having a basket, not having a basket, make a difference. Yeah. Anyone who says it doesn't. Yeah. And and again, that goes back to what I was saying about how you use the principles and then the mechanics of what you're using, how the design of the weapon you're using will then change what you do, what you can do, what you can't do, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Principles still apply, but you'll apply them dif differently. For example, Stephen just said, if I've got a buckler and I've got a basket hilt, I probably don't need to use the buckler to protect the sword hand. Right, right. right. So then that changes things. Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So there you have it from some folks who actually know what they're talking about. If you have enjoyed this excursion, kindly like, comment, and uh, subscribe. Uh, hit the bell so that you can join us the next time. Until soon, see you on the flip side. As most of you know, I have been studying the true fight of George Silver for about three and a half years now. I am not an expert. I'm just a student trying to share the resources that I have found helpful and the conclusions that I have reached so far. I rely heavily upon the expertise of those who have gone before, and I intend to credit their works and opinions whenever I reference them. If I have failed to do so, or you feel that I have misrepresented or misattributed your views or failed to state that a certain erroneous view is entirely my own, please let me know in the comments or privately and I will endeavor to make corrections and amends in a subsequent video. All errors are, of course, entirely my own. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the flip side.